When it comes to armor in Monster Hunter, defenses and resistances are nice, but what you really want are the armor skills. This guide series is going to focus on a progression path that you can easily follow for a reasonable build to get you through low rank and high rank. In low rank, progression is fairly linear and there isn't a lot of need to deviate. High rank is much more open-ended and will have many more options for you to explore. High rank builds will focus on decoration lists and charmless setups as those require rare materials and a lot of luck for decorations. You will need to make a choice between alpha and beta gear. Alpha gear has more skills, but sometimes has skills that aren't particularly useful on them. The beta versions usually give up skills for decoration slots. If you don't have decorations, the alpha sets are always better. If you have powerful decorations, the beta pieces are usually the better option as it will allow for further customization. These builds are reasonably effective and will be sufficient for getting you through the game. You may have skills that you favor on certain weapon types that aren't listed, and you should experiment to learn your playstyle. Your default armor is terrible, and you'll want to upgrade it right away. The easiest thing you can do is just build the entire bone set. This will be mostly beneficial for the headpiece's health boost, granting you plus 15 maximum HP, and the bone chest's attack up, granting you plus 3 attack power. The remaining bone pieces will benefit certain weapon types and not others. The gloves will give slugger, which is good for blunt weapons like hammer, hunting horn, and file attacks from the charge blade and switch axe. Bone Coil is only good for Hunting Horn, but it will extend the length of your songs. The Bone Greaves grant Entomologist, which helps prevent you from destroying Vespoids and Hornitars so you can carve them. Regardless of the skills it offers, this set is extremely easy to build and represents a good armor value spike that you should take starting out. Early on you'll be given an assignment to hunt Kestodons. After carving some, you'll unlock the ability to build Kestodon Gloves. Build these for Affinity Sliding, which gives you a temporary boost to your critical hit rate after sliding for a short period of time. They also have a strong defense boost over bone gauntlets and should be picked up for most weapon types. This set will be enough to tide you over until you hunt Great Jagras. Afterwards, you'll want to look into picking up the Jagras Coil. This provides Fortify, which gives you an attack and defense bonus if your HP reaches zero and you're carted back to camp. Fortify is a nice bonus for new players, and even veteran players will cart occasionally. It's a good pickup for all weapon types. Then you'll have to hunt Kuluyaku. You'll want to build both its Kulu male chest armor and the Kulu Greaves leg armor. The chest grants stamina surge which increases your stamina recovery rate. This is a great skill for every weapon type, but certain weapons will benefit much more from it. The Kulu Greaves grant critical eye which increases your affinity or critical hit rate by 3%. This isn't huge, but going from 0 to 3% affinity will actually allow you to perform critical hits and it will be a significant damage increase. This will be an acceptable set of baseline armor for the next mandatory fights. From here on though, things will be handled on a weapon by weapon basis. Sword and Shield actually has the most options for build variety. You'll be able to pick up gear mostly reserved for hammers and lances and use it effectively. You'll want to use elemental weapons throughout the game. You have knockout damage with your shield bash attacks and can use items while sheathed. This allows you to build a more support style build if you prefer to be an asset to your team in multiplayer. Just don't expect any thanks for your hard work. Of course, the main goal of any weapon is to deal damage, so stacking attack, affinity, and sharpness works well too. There will be a lot of options and ifs in this guide. Choose what works for your playstyle. The base armor set will have to tide you over to take on Pookie Pookie and Baroth. Baroth has some reasonable offerings for us. Baroth's head grants guard, which can be utilized effectively on Sword and Shield. You'll also want to consider the Baroth mail for Stamina Thief. Stamina Thief will add extra exhaust damage to your shield bash attacks. It is a reasonable pickup over the Kulu chest since you won't be using a lot of stamina with Sword and Shield and you will be using the shield bash all the time. Now hunt Jura Totus. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any offerings for us. Then you'll have to hunt Toby Kadachi and there's some reasonable upgrades. You'll want to build the Kadachi Van Braces for Evade Extender which will help you reposition. This is a reasonable but not mandatory upgrade for Sword and Shield, it's just that there's nothing better at this point. Also consider the Kadachi Coil if you're planning on using Toby Kadachi's Thunder Edge once you reach the Coral Highlands. The chest may seem worthwhile for Jump Master and the Sword and Shield's ability to rocket into the air, but it's not the best. It only works on attacks that attempt to mount the monster. It can be okay, but its mileage will vary. The helm is also a reasonable pickup for constitution, this will reduce your stamina drain while dodging and guarding. In practice, it's very similar to guard level 1 while having more applications, so it's probably worth picking up. Anjanath is next. The helm grants fire attack, which can be a reasonable pickup if you're using Anjanath's blazing edge, but you will be giving up guard or constitution.
Once you're in the Coral Highlands, you'll have to hunt Paolumu, but you can deviate and hunt Zitsuyaku. The Zitsi male grants Constitution, reducing your stamina drain while dodging and guarding. This will be a judgment call on Constitution versus Stamina Thief from the Baroth male. You can get another interesting piece of equipment from Zitsuyaku. The Zitsi coil grants wide range. This skill is 100% useless while playing solo, but if you're consistently playing online, it can be extremely good. Wide range makes items you consume affect nearby teammates. This includes healing potions and items that let you buff yourself like mite seeds or demon drugs. This is a great pickup if you're consistently playing online and it will allow you to be the unsung hero of the team. Now hunt Paolumu as part of the story. You can switch the Kadachi helm for Paolumu's hat to trade constitution for stamina surge. Both will have similar performance, but the Lumu hat will have superior defenses. You can also pick up the Lumu coil if you find yourself taking a lot of damage. Finally, the Lumu male grants Master Mounter. This makes it easier to mount monsters and take down mounted monsters. It's a reasonable option for Sword and Shield because you can reliably boost yourself up to mount. Consider it an option. Head down to the Rotten Vale and hunt Hornitars. Build the Greaves for Handicraft, which increases your weapon's sharpness. There isn't much better for leg options for a long time, so make sure to pick these up. Then finish off Rataban. More options are available to you now. You can pick up the Bond Helm for Slugger, which will increase the knockout power of your shield bash attacks. You can also pick up the Bond Coil for Guard. Both of these are more of a preference thing, as any of the options available here are reasonable. Now hunt Legiana. If you're using Legiana's Ice Sword and Shield, consider the Legiana Coil for a bonus to Ice Attack. Legiana's Vambraces also grant Airborne, which, just like Jumpmaster, isn't as good as it sounds. You'll only get the bonus on a few attacks, but it could be worth picking up. After Legiana, you'll also have access to Monster Bomb Plus and can build the Death Stench gear. Build the Death Stench heal to maintain Handicraft while gaining significantly higher defenses over the Hornetar Greaves. Next is Odegaron. You can pick up its coil for Critical Eye. You may also want to consider the Vambraces for Constitution since the Kadachi Vambraces could use an upgrade. Since you can use items while unsheathed, you'll never really need to sheath, which makes the 3 piece bonus of Punishing Draw not worth investing in. Then move on to Hunt Rathalos and Diablos. You're so close to high rank here that you may want to avoid farming and just move on. Of course, this is an idealized armor guide. Rathalos has good gear. Pick up Rathalos' head armor for attack up. Then build the chest for weakness exploit giving you a massive affinity bonus while attacking weak points. The 3 piece bonus of critical element is definitely worth picking up on sword and shield since you deal a large amount of elemental damage. You'll have to choose to give up either your hand or leg armor, neither of which are great options, but jump master is better than fire resistance. Build these sets if you want, but it's time to move on to High Rank. High Rank finally introduces us to some options. There's a lot of upgrades available now and you can immediately go and hunt High Rank versions of everything in Low Rank. The easy answer is that anything that worked for you in Low Rank will work here, while providing additional skills and High Rank defenses. Sky assumes that you have no useful decorations, as such the beta gear is simply worse than the alpha gear as it loses skills for decoration slots. If you have decorations, consider the beta versions of some pieces, otherwise stick with alpha. Same goes for charms, and this armor guide is charmless. Go ahead and pick up whatever charms you see fit, like attack or handicraft or even things like wide range. Unfortunately, you are going to lose all your set bonuses and kind of start back from square one. You do have some options depending on your playstyle and preferences here, I'll break it down into a damage build and a support utility build. You'll want to pick up the Bone Vambraces Alpha for Slugger and Attack Boost, this is a great pickup for Sword and Shield. The Kulu Headpiece Alpha should also be picked up immediately for a second stack of Weakness Exploit. You'll lose Critical Element, but gaining the extra affinity will be well worth it. Then return to the Rotten Veil vale to hunt Hornitars to pick up the Hornitar Greaves Beta for Handicraft. Now hunt Pink Rathian and pick up its Wrath Heart Coil Alpha for Handicraft and Poison Resistance. If you prefer a more utility style, you have a few options for headgear. You can build the Jagras Helm Alpha for Speed Eating, or you can build the Moss Swine Mask Alpha for Mushroom Mancer. Speed Eating will allow you to heal your teammates faster in a pinch, and Mushroom Mancer will allow you to eat mushrooms to buff yourself and teammates. You should pair both of these with Wide Range by picking up the Zitsi Coil Alpha and the Zitsi Vambraces Alpha for Stun Resistance, Wide Range, and some Water Attack. Then you can continue using the Low Rank Rathalos Male for Weakness Exploit, or you can pick up the Lumu Male Beta for Master Mounter. 
Finally pick up the Jagger Greaves Alpha for free meal. This makes it so sometimes you won't consume an item, giving you more opportunities to use them throughout a hunt. Unfortunately, if you prefer the support style, you're severely limited in options from here on out. You won't be able to do much else until you get decorations and access to endgame gear. This should make you adequately prepared to take on the higher tier monsters of high rank though. Of course, Rathalos will be the next target to upgrade the chest to the high rank version. The two-piece set bonus is Critical Element, which will be a great skill for elemental sword and shields. The set is not easy to build, and the ideal setup requires multiple gems, but it will be a great set for the remainder of the game. The two-piece set bonus is extremely easy to get and has amazing synergy with the chest and boots, which give three points of weakness exploit. Grab the Rathalos Greaves Alpha for Jump Master and Weakness Exploit, then pick up the Male Beta for a decoration slot over Fire Attack. You'll need a plate and a gem, but these are great pickups. You'll regain Critical Element and Weakness Exploit level 3. This also frees up your headgear to upgrade to something else. You'll want to consider things like the Rathalos Head for Attack Up or the Zora Headgear Beta for Handicraft. With this, you'll be extremely well prepared to tank on the remaining bosses of the game. You can hunt Azure Rathlos to upgrade further. The Wrath Soul Helm beta gives critical boost and two decoration slots. The Alpha version gives Intimidator, which is just not a great skill, so take the slots. This again requires a Rathalos Ruby, but it will be a great addition to endgame content. These sets will be adequate for everything else in the game. Everything after this is just a matter of customization and preference once you get access to better charms and decorations. The Elder Dragon sets are usually safe bets, but won't necessarily be better or worse than this, just different. Nergagante's set is a great general purpose set. It has maximum might, which gives you a 30% affinity increase while at maximum stamina. Maximum might works really well on Sword and Shield, but you won't be able to utilize it shortly after dodging or guarding. It's a very consistent affinity increase on all monster parts, not just their weak points. It also has Agitator, which has a very high uptime of increased attack and affinity. Then it has attack and stamina surge to round it out. It's a great general purpose set that's quite easy to build. Nergigante's Dragon King Eye Patch has Weakness Exploit level 2 and a tier 3 decoration slot making it a good pickup. You'll be able to build the Dober gear with Elder Dragon Bones and Elder Dragon Blood after Nergigante. Pick up the Dober Male Beta and the Dober Greaves Beta for more attack up options. If you like using the Mushroom Mancer buff set, you can pick up the Male Alpha for attack 2 and the final stack of Mushroom Mancer. Teos of Ambrose's beta are a great pickup and tie nicely with the Dragon King Eye Patch or Rathalos Male Beta to max out Weakness Exploit while providing you some very valuable decoration slots. Valhazax gear isn't the best, but the materials can be used to make the Death Stench gear. You can use the Death Stench heals beta for handicraft. Your final build will want to incorporate Critical Element if you're using Elemental Sword and Shields, which severely limits your options as you need two pieces of the Rathalos gear. The best choices are the Helm and Mail as they have excellent synergy with Critical Element. Then incorporate as much Attack, Handicraft, Critical Boost, and other utility skills that you can muster. For the support style, you're really looking for as much decoration slots as possible. The Vangus Greaves grant 2 speed eating and 2 slots. The Lava Seoth Van Braces give affinity sliding and some extra wide range. Then use the Moss Swine Mask Alpha and the Dober Male Alpha to max out Mushroom Mancer, giving you a well-rounded set.